everything old is new again. America's entertainment oh. pop culture talk show. It may well possess a rudimentary intelligence. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Feel the great disturbance in the force. Hello, I'm Mr. Ray. Come on, Mark, like a job for me. Where's the goodies? Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. I bet you wouldn't have done anything like this if Mom and Dad were here. You filthy criminal. Excuse me while I whip this out. Go ahead. Make my day. Here are your hosts, Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Well, I'm in this dark tunnel, and and there are other people in there with me, but I can't really see their faces. Is there a bright, beautiful light at the end of the tunnel? Yes. And the people, they, they seem like they're helping you, Todd? Uh-huh. Welcome, everything old is new again. This is Douglas Viviani with the ever open-minded David Cohen. Yes, David, yes. how are you? Very good. Very excited today. Uh, why? What do you think? Well, we have about? a very special guest. We should, I, do you want me to get into it or go I'll right let you ahead? Do it? Absolutely. No, you do it this time. Let's All see right. Wow. Well, well, have you, Doug, or anyone listening, ever thought about what happens when we die? The question has been set before, and your words, Doug. I'm going to get very uh, <laughs> historical here. Every civilization, and the question remains: something subjective that we carry in our hearts. This week we have the pleasure of welcoming, welcoming back to Everything Old is New Again, a guest who can shed some light on the issue through performing readings right here in our studio. And we've had him on the show before. We're happy to have him again. Uh, George Anderson, thank you very much for coming. He's the first medium in history to regularly appear on a cable television show, the first one to gain international exposure for his extraordinary ability, and the only medium to be cleared by network television standards and practices to appear in the first ever primetime special of mediumship, Contact Talking to the Dead. George Anderson is a New York Times best-selling author. Uh, one of the books, just to say, is George Anderson's Lessons from the Light, his latest work, Walking in the Garden of Souls. Our leg regular listeners are aware and uh, have been uh, hitting our old shows on Everything Old is New Again dot biz and record numbers to listen to our old three other interviews that we've done with uh, with George. Uh, George, welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to do something different today than we have in the past. We've done three shows where we've explored sort of the conclusions or at least impressions that you have of what you do and what's been happening in the hereafter or what does happen and how it, uh, they interact, if at all, with us during our lives and so forth. Today, we're going to get to sort of the heart of mm -hmm. what you've been doing since, I, I think we could say, the late 70s, right? Would, would you say? Or when yes. So well, since the late 70s, before the books and before all, all of um, uh, the other adventures, uh, you uh, began and are still doing Readings, correct? Yes. What we call them and what more sessions. Sessions, and what yeah. we're we're going to do is we we've, we've ran a contest, and well, your listeners are aware of that because we've run the the ad and have had uh, quite a response. We have listeners that will be calling in uh, that we will have live uh, readings over the air, which is going to be tremendous. And in fact, what we'll do is we'll try one with myself first, and we'll lay down the groundwork. So let's do the groundwork first. When you do a reading, in essence, for someone that's not heard this before, you're in essence speaking with, hearing from, getting into communication with someone or some number of people from the other side. Is that an idea? Yes. Okay. Um, it certainly seems to be that way until further notice. The only thing I request from the subject is only to, you know, acknowledge with yes, you understand. I think a misconception people may have about it is... It's not a two-way conversation. You wouldn't be able to phone in and say, hey, they say anything about the lottery numbers? I said, because that'd be the case, I'd be getting them. Usually I'll say to people, no, that's not what it's all about. I use it basically as a unique form of grief support. Um, the only thing that may help is they do seem to come to whoever the subject will be on the program today. They do seem to come in a manner that they feel that you know what they're talking about. So I'm learning to kind of keep my schnoz out of it as much as possible. Also, I have a very bad habit of... Uh, when I hear it, of formalizing names. And just because I hear the name Billy doesn't mean the person's name is William. You know, and I'll say William and the subject is saying no. 
And I'm insisting yes, and then finally, like they'll flip out over there and say, "Why don't you just say what you're hearing?" Yeah. And so what we'll try to do is remind uh, the callers when before they call in and and the listeners that for once in uh, the experience of everything old is new again in the last three plus years, you're not going to hear me talk so much. You're going <laughs> to you're going to hear me basically say yes or no, and that would probably be. Yeah. Maybe a little something, but or that's you understand, a, understand, and that will be that. Uh, but you will hear through this. I think it would be a, a, ex- extraordinarily interesting to stay tuned and listen to how these readings develop. And from what I've heard, uh, you know, through the years, as a listener, you're going to hear uh, or eavesdrop. This is the best way to say. It. You're going to hear. You're going to eavesdrop on all of these readings. Uh, with that said, I want to be clear that I have not ever talked to Mr. Anderson about my family, uh, who's passed before, names of any anybody that's passed before, any experience whatsoever with this process. I, I've not had any experience other than going to a couple of book signings and so forth. Other than that, I think we're ready to roll. So whenever you are, we'll we'll do this and uh, we'll see how we go. Okay. So, um, so, well, you're well prepared for it. So let's begin and see who comes to visit. Okay. Well, immediately male presence came forward. Actually, three. There's two others with him. And two females showed up. So there's a little group there. Okay. Now, assuming, naturally, it has to be somebody connected with you. A male came forward, so I take you understand, yes? Yes. Okay. Excuse me, trying to get you to say yes so they hear your voice. Now, let him explain, not you. Let him explain. One of the males does come in a father manner, understood? Yes. Okay. Hmm, he's not giving me my signal yet, so I'm not going to say anything. A male presence does come forward as a granddad, but on the paternal side, understood? Yes. Okay. Actually, a male does stay dad, understood? Not yours, though, understood? Okay. You know, I don't know what's going on here, and I don't want to put my... I'm trying my best to keep my nose out of it, but a male pushes dad dad at me and then states he is not your dad but i'm also wondering is he trying to keep me on the paternal side as the granddad came on one of the females also moves forward as a grandmother okay yep and again i'm pushed more on the paternal side all right let me explain this so i can get this out of my head there's people around you claim to be grandparents all I want you to understand is I'll assume without helping me, either they've all passed or the ones that have passed have made an appearance. I don't know if she means from there or here, but one grandmother kept bringing up that you knew her better. Yes. So there might have been one that was more in your life years ago. She, without explaining, she brings up your mom, understood? But... Your folks are still here, yes? Yes. Meaning on the earth. Okay, I don't know who said that, but thank you. I'm glad they did. I can get that out of my head now. But this grandmother may be on the maternal side. Yes. Because she claimed you knew her better, or you have a better memory of her, and then she called mom, and I waited to see what she was going to say, and she didn't say anything, and then finally she said, look, just so you can get it right out of your head. Both his parents are still on the earth. Right. So this grandmother is definitely the one on the maternal side who certainly, not overwhelmingly, but did play a significant motherly role. Yes. So it's... And also, too, they do give me the impression there is longevity in the family because, you know, some people, of course, could have passed on it, whatever, but most of them seem to have been around for... a lengthy amount of time yes <clears throat> now this grandmother also which i'm not surprised to hear and you shouldn't be either but it's still nice to hear does come as claim she's around you many times like the guardian angel good um you know that doesn't way they met that doesn't mean they wave the magic wand to make things go the way that we would like also does put the golden apple over your head so Obviously, in some ways, you were the apple of her eye. Um, A lot of these people, because your grandmother speaks of going over there with no expectations, she does bring up she knew she was going to pass on. It didn't happen one, two, three, and she states that 
She did put up a fight. <laughs> yes. She definitely hung in there as long as she could. She also admits, and, and this is make, to make her sound like a scaredy cat, but she does admit being a little, um, you know, a little scared about passing on. I'm sure everybody's going to experience that when the time comes. Her main reason was at that point, it's because she certainly did not know what to expect or what would happen. She also gives me the impression if there's nothing, I'm never going to see you again. You know, this is it. We're going to have to take a break here for a moment. We're here on Everything Old is New Again. David Cohen, Douglas Viviani, eavesdropping in with you on a reading with psychic medium George. We'll be back right after this on Everything Old is New Again. Now, back to America's Entertainment Pop Culture Talk Show. Everything old is new again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. And we are here with psychic medium George Anderson, who is doing a reading for myself here. And we left off where there was a woman that identified herself as basically my grandmother and uh, was going to be discussing some further things. And thereafter, we will debrief and see what's happening here on Everything Old is New Again. She also tells me walking fine and back to her old self because she, you know, she's not trying to sound like a martyr, but she does admit she had a rough time prior to her passing. Yes. It was not a one, two, three thing. And I mean, I have to, I have to give her credit. She fought like the Dickens to get well again. Yes. I mean, she really did her best. Now, she does state that her spouse is with her, so I take it he's passed also. Yes. You know, does thank everybody for being good to her prior to her passing. You know, it may sound like a very vague or general message, but still, it, for them, it's important. Whatever you do, don't help me. I thought I heard the name Anna or Anna said. Understood? Yes. But passed on? Yes. Okay. And she seems to take me back, understood? I don't think that's somebody you would have expected to show up today. But you made her day that you're rec recalling her. Yes. Both women do come in a mother manner. And since I know it's not your mom, that can mean an aunt, grandmother, you know, great-grandmother, something like that. Actually, be honest with you, a granddad also comes close, understood? Yes. You know, you are... See, I never knew my grandparents, so I'm going to be inclined to say you were very fortunate that they did have longevity. They did stick around enough, long enough, where you got to know them and they got to know you. Because also, the grandfather, kind of on the paternal side as well, that that set you might have known better. Both... You know, do call out to your mom. You know, if your mom could deal with this, they reach out to her. Yeah, your grandmother did speak of passing in a sleep-like state, understood? Yes. Now, uh, without telling me again, either, you know, sleep-like state, coma, something like that. I mean, again, she reiterates she had one heck of a time. So when she first gets there, you know, there's no big loud speaker announcement that tells you that you just died. So at first she thinks she's dreaming because people are coming to welcome her and she doesn't know what to make of it. Yes. You know, she thinks she's dreaming that they're telling her she's passed on. Yeah, as the one thing which I couldn't say I blame her, the one thing so frustrating for her is losing her independence. Yes. Once she knew she was not going to go home and go back to her normal lead my life self it's not really a question of giving up it's a question of realizing my hands are tied yeah if your grandparents give me the impression you know not like anybody would let you go haywire but you are allowed to breathe yes you're allowed to have feelings opinions yeah certainly again they come across as nice people you know wouldn't let you get away with anything but certainly hearts are in the right place Yes. Also, did hear what sounded like the name Mary or Marie, but she does seem over there to know your grandmother and that part of the family. Okay. So, could have been family, could have been friend, because they use family very lightly. It can mean by blood, marriage, or term of endearment. Yeah, here comes that 
Anna again, who does come to you in a motherly manner, understood? Yes. Which, again, to me would be an aunt, grandmother, that sort of thing. But I will say this both because your, your grandparents probably know that, you know, we are limited time-wise. Certainly do express pride in you and the person you've become. Oh, that's nice. That you you certainly have come a long way, and nothing's been handed to you on a silver platter. Everything has been earned through work and progress, you know, but they would understand the same thing. But certainly those two around you very much like his guardian angels. It does seem you had a pretty decent upbringing, yes? Yes. Yeah, you're very fortunate. You didn't you came from a, what the symbol they're showing me would represent a cherished home. Yes. So obviously, you know, they're showing me scenes out of the old movie, Meet Me in St. Louis. That's my symbol of a cherished home. It's just a nice feeling of wholesomeness in the with family, your folks, grandparents. You know, it's, I know because we're limited to telling me that they want to pull back, but they certainly do embrace you with love, certainly do call out to your parents and family if you think they could deal with this. They reach out and... You know, the other people that have come through are there with them in any case. And with that, they pull back. Okay. Very good. That's uh, uh, where we are on Everything Old is New Again. We will uh, continue talking about that for the next few minutes. We can uh, debrief here uh, based on the fact that I'm sitting right here and can, uh, can as opposed to somebody's calling on the telephone, can, can actually tell you what went on there. Did that make any sense to you? The, the, like, as a listener first, before we get into what it meant to me, could you follow any of that? Like, I don't know how. How does that come off when you listen to it? Well, it comes off as I think he was speaking in a lot of generalities that I think could have applied to anybody's grandparents and their relationship with the grandkids and the rest of the family. Right. I hope that they would have pride <laughs> in right. you. You know what I mean? Exactly. But it's nice to hear. Right. But the thing that is strange to me and that kind of gives me pause is that there were three names that he came up with yeah and let's talk about the first one i shouldn't say three names he came up with two names but three people the first person he basically said was my grandmother uh and said that she had a difficult time passing that she passed in a sleep-like state in like a coma that she was fighting now i don't know does that apply to a lot of people it certainly is something that actually did happen. She had Alzheimer's and was in a bed deteriorating, unfortunately, hmm. for at least two years. So that was absolutely accurate. Which, but which, you, obviously, you have two grandmothers. Right. Like everybody does. So which that, one was he referring to? That was my mom's mom. And how do you know that? Uh, well, that's the, <laughs> that's a good question. That, I know that because my grandmother on my father's side i never knew oh, she passed okay. away before i was born i see so it, it certainly, must be her right certainly i would imagine the case. yeah the other the other grandmother passed away from cancer before i was born so that's that uh okay. in addition to that icing on the cake we always would uh, i guess you'd say laugh about it in some way be lighthearted about but the way my grandmother was walking later on in life she had some difficulties with bunions and what have you. It was always a question. She could never find the right shoes. She always had mm. to have open shoed, uh, open toed shoes if possible. Uh, whenever we walked to places, she was always walking. She was a great walker, but then later on in life, it became an issue. And that was an issue in the family and with her. It wasn't like something that, oh, she's walking and, and uh, that's great, like, so what? That was something that was talked about on a regular basis, especially the last 10 years of her life, about how she was walking walking or not being able to walk to me that's that's more specific than oh well it was difficult she battled to the end i mean that 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 to me even though it applies to you and to her is still more you know a generality but the the trouble with walking i think is very specific right. uh, you know maybe i don't know percentages but maybe half the people die you know in, in a struggle other half of the people just die overnight i'm not i don't know how right. that is but that that certainly applied so let's say he's you know 50 50 shot on that but to add the fact that uh she had trouble walking and that she can walk now that you tell me add those two together the that has to the probabilities have to go pretty high uh at that point if that makes sense yeah you know like that to, to, the combination to get exactly right it's kind of amazing i don't see it as a combination i just see it as 
the walking was right. Yeah. The yeah. other the other stuff was very general. The right. Wa- the walking is very specific. But to go in a sleep light state in a coma, you know, I'm not saying but mm. that was right. Uh, mm. But okay, then there's this Anna who came forward. Right. That is my uh, godmother. That's her name. Wow, it was Anna. Okay. So that's r- and and he said it was an aunt as well, and, and right. that is. That's so that's cool. right to the point. That is right yeah. exactly. That's amazing. And uh, and then there was this Mary, who uh, he said was uh, someone that knew my grandmother, who he just spoke about. Right. That turned out to be my grandmother's mother. His her name was Mary. Wow. So two out of two names, and then if you add the third grandmother with the specifics of walking and what have you, and that's pretty good. It's pretty pretty yeah. straight on. I like the message that they have have pride and so forth. The other thing is, you know, you expect this grandiose, glorious message, don't you? Like pick seven four seven two for the lottery tomorrow. Right. It'll change right. your life. Exactly. Like you expect some kind of uh, this, right? Don't you expect some grandiose message? Or uh, and I don't think you. I think that's unrealistic. Do I? <laughs> I'm kidding. We'll be back right this? this and everything old is new again. Music here, Hello right? and goodbye. We'll be back and everything old is new again. Now, back to America's entertainment pop culture talk show. Everything old is new again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. And we are here with George Anderson. Going to dive into a brand new reading with an Angie. Angie, uh, we're going to start the reading right up right here, right now with George Anderson. Well, immediately a male presence comes forward. All right, let me begin as they did now, of course, assuming it has to be somebody connected with you. A male came forward, so I take you understand, yes? Yes, I do, right. <laughs> does, does come as family. So I'm, yes. I'm sure he is somehow. Family is also used lightly. It can mean by blood marriage or term of endearment. Now, without explaining, does come very close to you. So I take it you and he close. And as he stated that, and don't explain, he put a big heart over your head. Understood? Yes, I do. Okay. Again, don't explain, because I could take this in different directions, but he claims he's your sweetheart. Understood? Yes, I do. Actually, does come as an actual sweetheart, yes? Yes. Yeah, because he... He's pushing more spouse at me now. Understood? Yes. Okay. And I just have to explain to you, you know, if you didn't walk into City Hall, by him telling me he's your sweetheart, he's the real McCoy sweetheart, obviously a shared love relationship. Yes. I mean, in essence, and you don't have to explain anything, he comes as a spouse. Yes. Don't take this the wrong way, but he is glad he passed before you. Wow admits he doesn't think he would have made a good widower, so to speak. Certainly does embrace you with love from over there. And does give you the impression you're soulmates, understood? Yes, I do. Certainly, as he states, which I'm sure is the case, the relationship wasn't perfect, understood? Right. But he hoped you know that he always loved you and still does. It does seem important you know that, because he did express, like, regret to you that at one point it might have seemed he was kind of tuning you out. Understood? Yes, I do. Because that feeling like he's there and he's not there. Yeah, definitely could be a chop breaker, yes? Yes. (laughs) Absolutely, because he gives me the impression when he's here on the earth, well, I guess we're all like this, but... You know, he was definitely, there's a right way and wrong way, then there's my way. And he just feels, it makes him feel sad over there at times that he sees that sometimes you can't help but think was he, you know, he didn't love me anymore. Understood? Yes, I do. And that's why he wanted to emphasize that to you, that he always loved you and still does. Also, and don't take this the wrong way, he does admit many times not being the happiest person here. Understood? Yes, I understand. When he was on the earth. I can't say I don't feel sorry for him. He admits when he, not now, but he admits when he was here on the earth, had like a lot, had health troubles, but in the sense of like mental and emotional. Understood? Yes. No, certainly somebody who would be subjected to like depression and anxiety yes and those are illnesses 
and those certainly can do you harm. Um, does admit he has come to you in dreams, yes? Yes. Yeah, because he certainly has reached out before right now. But wants to make sure that, you know, as long as the dreams are always comforting visitations, that's genuine. Anything that upsets you, never pay any attention to it. He does He does tell me he had health troubles, understood? Yes. But a, one of the main health concerns he had was being sick at heart, understood? Yes. Yes, he does give me the impression he had been ill for a time but didn't know it, understood? Yes, I do. Yeah, because he shows you the volcano. Apparently something's developing or building and not aware. But this could also explain his moodiness. Understood? Yes. Just hopes you know you could not have saved him. Understood? Yes. And wants to make sure you know you did not fail him. Understood? I do. Because there's only complained about you, sometimes you think too much. And when you think too much, you're inclined to create little demons that don't exist. Yeah, by the time this illness is found, the damage is done. Understood? Yeah. Yeah, he could be fiery, though, yes? <laughs> yes. Mamma mia, this guy's got a temper. And he's not the most patient guy in the world. But see, again, not that he's copping out, but he wasn't well, but didn't realize he wasn't well initially. So that's causing him to be kind of very moody and such. Understood? Yes, I do. I heard this a few times, but I did hear the name George called. Understood? Now, yes. But passed on? Yes. Okay. Yeah, George does come as family. Yes. Maybe a little bit more by term of endearment. Yes. You know, because, again, that could be, you know, through marriage, something. Yeah, with this illness, whatever it was, it does seem he didn't have any symptoms initially. You know, like he says he felt tired. Right. Very sensitive guy. Fantastic trait, but also a troublemaker. I mean, I could tell him the sky is blue. He believes it's aqua. He's rather on the argumentative side. Yes. Yes. I mean, one thing I don't think he would do too easy, easily, but he genuinely apologizes to you that things turned out the way they did. Understood? I do. And that's another reason why he's glad he had gone first. Because it feels, um, this has nothing to do with religion, but I saw St. Barbara appear around you, which would represent that there must have been a period you felt stuck. Understood? I, I understand. But one thing which is nice here, even though um, your husband had his trials and tribulations toward the end, he still has come to recognize he had a fulfilling life to the best of his ability. And that's all that's requested of us. That is good to know. But just hopes that as long as you know, because he can't BS me from over there, as long as you know he always loved you and still does, you'll sleep a little better tonight. True. <laughs> and that's his main concern was really to clear the air on your end because of the fact that you do think too much. Also, don't say who, but did hear the name John or Jack. And he, I'm sorry? I understand. Okay, but passed on. But I think with this, because I know we have to keep these rather short, but, you know, your husband certainly does embrace you and family with love. Also is kind of frustrated over there at times about you and gap of communication with family. Understood? I, I do. You know, uh, he's not saying you're a monkey, but you might be feeling as though you're the monkey in the middle. I understand. But St. Barbara reaches out to you in compassion and understanding because that feeling like going from one stuck situation to another. Yes, I understand. You might have to keep your distance, understood? Yes. 
because I see Switzerland around you, sign of isolation and neutrality. I don't know if your husband was a talker, but from over there he is. But in any case, I know that I have to pull. But certainly he does embrace you with love and to family also. You know, there's other people there, but, you know, he obviously had the need. So with that, he pulls back and the others do too. And there they go. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you so much. It's it's our pleasure, and uh, I'll follow up with you. Can we just uh, say that you are listening to us on KMAJ AM in Topeka, Kansas? So we're happy to to have you with us on everything old is new again. Thank you so much for joining us, Angie. And uh, was was it, it not, no specifics, but was it uh, somewhat on the mark, or where did we go with that? Yes. Yes, that that was that was really awesome. <laughs> ah, see, that's terrific to hear. Okay, I'll follow up with you, and uh, and thank you so much for joining us. George can also be uh, uh, found on the internet with uh, georgeanderson dot com. He's giving a keynote speech at opening the first ever Helping Parents Heal National Conference in Scottsdale, Arizona, in uh, April thirteenth uh, through the fifteenth. Uh, we'll be back right after this on Everything Old Is New Again. Now, back to America's Entertainment Pop Culture Talk Show. Everything old is new again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Yes, welcome back. We're here with psychic medium George Anderson, who is communicating with those who have passed away. You can take a look at his website at georgeanderson.com to find out more information about how to get a reading yourself. You certainly could do them in person or by telephone. That's georgeanderson.com. Certainly, you can go to amazon.com. He's got quite a number of books there to read of uh, an interpretation of readings that he's done in the past, as well as his feelings about the hereafter and his interpretation of what it's like when we go. I would suggest it's some great reading. Feel free to dive into that. What we're going to do is dive into a little bit of a debrief of the reading we just heard with Angie, and we will do so right now. And I just wanted to debrief here a little bit and see where we stand and, and what, if anything, that meant to you, Angie, because we're just kind of eavesdropping on your reading, and we kind of don't know the specifics of your life, but a couple of names came up, and a sweetheart, a male sweetheart came up. Is that, you were saying yes, is that somewhat relevant to your life? Did it make sense to you? Yes, it made a lot of sense. Okay, and did you had someone that passed away that was close to you, I guess, that you could be yes. defined as a sweetheart? Yes. Okay, and you went through a little bit about sort of, I guess you'd say, apologizing or just going through a little bit about his maybe distance from you and maybe had a little bit of depression and anxiety. Does that make sense as well with this this gentleman? Yes, it did. Wow, okay. Now, in addition to that, there was uh, George was having some fun with him. It sounded like he, he says he had a, it was a fiery individual with a little bit of a temper or <laughs> was that something that... Was that was pretty spot on as well, yes. Okay, and, and, and uh, not to say that he wasn't patient but he was saying he actually did say kind of in some ways oh he's not not very patient with me here so all of that made sense huh yes it did wow that's incredible now now of course there was a name or two names came up a name george and then he said john or jack did either of those come into play yes one of one of those definitely did interesting and and was that related to the the male that that he was talking about or was that a separate person uh it was the same Oh, wow. So isn't that interesting? He was able to peg the The name name of the individual that he claims that he was talking to uh, and saying also that he's a sweetheart and fiery and and had temper and so forth. So it sounds like he was pretty straight on there. Yeah, it was. It was very interesting. I, you know, I wasn't sure what to expect. And when he hit some things that were really close, I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. See, to me, that's what kind of grounds it is when you get a name like that of the person that then fills in the gap for you and of course for us listening eavesdropping in that this these characteristics he was talking about and of course that he's passed away and of course that he was close with you in terms of a sweetheart kind of a relationship almost everything he said then when you summarize that from that point of view about george seems to have pretty been pretty spot on so when you hear the the name it kind of grounds the rest of the message does that make sense Yes, it did. It was like I could see, you know, some things, but then, yes, saying the name just really made it 
hit home even more. Right, comes alive, because I'm not going to say you could say what he said about this gentleman to anyone, but it's still kind of kind of vague and in some ways listening in, but hearing the name makes it really, wow, that's amazing. Basically, what we're hearing is, is that you had some experience here that, you know, we go into this with a skeptic, uh, I guess you'd say a, a healthy dose of skepticism, but then when we hear what we've just heard of from you in a summary of what was said, it leads us to at least maybe think about the door being open to this possibly have actually happened what, what do you think about it what conclusion can you make from this if any yes i i agree i mean nothing ever can be 100 percent concrete you know but it, it is interesting how close to home a lot of things were right and uh and especially too did it, did it affect you without well, i don't want to get too specific in your your own personal feelings but i mean did it affect you in any way where you walk away with something that gee you know what maybe there is if i don't know if you believe it or not hereafter or did it put icing on the cake for you or is it just something that you remain skeptical about i mean did it affect you in any way is a better question no it, it did affect me it made me feel like you know these things in some ways can be real and sometimes they are and you know, like I said, not everything will be 100%, but the things that were spot on was like, oh, wow, it opened my eyes to a lot. Right. Okay. Well, that's great. I I'm glad you, you had an experience that gave you and all of us some meat to and something to think about with this, because we've seen this with a lot of other people. And, and you know, of course, you see in the media and, and, and you don't know if all this is really happening. But with this gentleman, George, uh, he's written all these books and he's and he's done something specific here with you. And it's something at least uh, to consider and have some, some thought of. You know? Yes, and thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. It's our pleasure, and thank you for, for joining us on Everything Old is New Again. Hopefully we've made a listener out of you, and you can listen to the, the other shows that we have with George, and maybe even listen to us when we talk about pop culture, entertainment pop culture, and, and have some fun. Yes, thank you. My pleasure. Thanks. Have a great day. All right, we're back here. Uh, fresh off of that, David Cohen, your comments. Well, it didn't get real wholeheartedly, yes, I'm going to listen to your show at the end there. <laughs> and I noticed how, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, okay. I fine. won the contest. I got a free reading for George right. Anderson. and uh, I didn't know there was more to it. What are you talking about? I'm not show? listening to your show. <laughs> what show are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, so I think overall, I mean... George did pretty well, right? Yeah, I mean, that was, it's an amazing show so far. This is the first of, I believe, four shows we're going to do with George Anderson. He has agreed to do readings on the air for the first time in 30 years. Only and exclusively through Everything Old is New Again. I think that's something that we need to... to Profess and to show that it certainly is and a to unique, brag about exactly is a unique uh, opportunity for us because we are broadcasting out of Long Island. He's from Long Island. Doesn't mean you can't get a reading. You can get a reading over the telephone as he's been doing. Uh, just go to his website, uh, old new again at aol dot com. That's us. Go ahead and communicate with us that way. We'll communicate with him uh, if you like. And the alternative, go directly to yourself on. Uh, the web go georgeanderson.com georgeanderson.com and you can get a reading yourself over the telephone no matter where you're listening to us certainly you could also get uh, answers to some questions from his perspective as to what life is like after we pass in a book called lessons from the light and there are some other books but that one i thought was very interesting and that's on Amazon.com for sure. He's got about 10 best-selling books on Amazon.com. And his name, of course, is George Anderson. And he will be back with us on Everything Old is New Again in a couple of months. And uh, and we'll debrief and do the same that we, we did here. Hopefully it kind of opens your eyes. I think it's important in life as we get older, um, you know, we sort of get into our daily routine and paying the bills and dealing with the family and we don't uh, any longer have that open mind as we did as a child I think to possibilities of other things that go on whether it's UFOs whether it's psychics whether it's ghosts whether it, you know whatever it might be it makes uh, and gives life a little color don't you think sorry what oh yeah yeah sure <laughs> I just wasn't sure when I was going to chime in there. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for you to wake up. That's, uh, <laughs> no, uh, it, it is it's something that, you know, you can go through life and just do stuff. Yeah. And then, you, you know, you don't think about all this. Where, where is your impression now after listening to those two readings and the debrief of what's going on here, David Cohen? Which, by the way, David's scheduled for a reading himself. Down I'm excited, line. yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I was skeptical, of course. But now, yeah, I'm starting to think, how did he get all that right? So... Yeah. You mean it's amazing to him to get 
the names he got for myself. The names are impressive. Got, uh, the yeah. name, again, of the sweetheart right. uh, of Angie that passed away again. Yeah. Uh, with a temper, and, you know, uh, she basically said the description of, of her um, sweetheart, I don't know exactly who the person was to her, but uh, uh, let's just say sweetheart, was was spot on, she said. Yeah, that's interesting, too, right? Because it could have just been a swing and a miss, right? Right. Uh, so You know, people come into this, they, you, you sort of want to hear certain things, uh, but then you you hear something different. Like I, like my reading, I certainly, you know, I, I was expecting other people and other messages and so forth, but w- w- that's not up to us. It's it's up to them, uh, so to speak, wh- right. what they're presenting. And what he presented was was spot on for me in terms of the, the names of the people. How do you come up with the name of someone? If you're coming up with right. two names and two out of two is, is described as what they, you know, the background to you and even how they pass and all that. And he gets the names right. It's not like he's going through a directory. Uh, yeah. I mean, know? to me, that's the most impressive thing so far is the, the names that he's coming up with. It's, it's, um, it's something that I, I think it, you may want to read some of these uh, these books. Amazon.com. George Anderson is the author, uh, Psychic Medium. GeorgeAnderson.com. Feel free to go to that website, and uh, he's got lots of information there. Uh, all right, so we'll be back next week and explore some entertainment pop culture with David Cohen, Douglas Viviani on Everything Old is New Again. We'll be back next week to talk about entertainment pop culture on Everything Old is New Again. Here's your favorite song, David. <laughs> You're a good voice today.